That's TrendsResearch.com. Subscribe to the Trends Journal. This information is too important to wait. This is Alex Jones with five good reasons you should consider buying a solar power generator. Number one, new climate legislation could easily double or triple your electric bill. Number two, our new energy czar wants to control how much power your electric company allows you to have. It's true. Total government control of electricity in the name of smart grid technology is coming. Number three, in some areas of the country, the power grid is dangerously overloaded. And now new socialist legislation is only compounding the problem. Number four, dangerous weather is always a threat to local grids. Every year, thousands of families lose their power from weather-related outages. Number five, a solar power generator provides powerful backup insurance and peace of mind. Folks, I really believe in the solar power generators offered by Solutions from Science, one of my oldest sponsors. You can get more information at www.mysolarbackup.com. That's mysolarbackup.com. Remember, the government doesn't own the sun, so go to mysolarbackup.com or call 1-877-327-0365. He's the T-Rex of political talk. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. We're going to get Ron Paul's take on the oil spill and on the Federal Elections Commission witch hunt against him. And, of course, what's happening, the incredible developments in the economy. I mean, I cannot stress to you to have how, how serious it is to have CNN, the Associated Press, Reuters, everybody saying, oh, the U.N. says get rid of the dollar as the world reserve currency and have SDRs run by the IMF and World Bank. I mean, this is world government. This is total bondage by these crooks. And simultaneously in Europe, in Greece... Everywhere, they have engineered the collapse of these economies on record and then take the Financial Reform Act that just passed the House. Now they've got to reconcile it with the Senate version. Even the Washington Post admitted in an article last Friday that it's $600 trillion that's owed to these bankers. It's owed because they just made up the money and claim we owe it, literally. It's derivatives. It's made up. But they're claiming we owe it because they're in control and that this allows them to take over the entire industries, uh, economic industries in this country, the financial industry and anything that affects the economy. So it's a financial dictatorship. It's giving the Federal Reserve more power. In fact, guys, I had that article from Friday highlighted and I looked for it for like 30 minutes this morning. I can't find it in all my stacks. If you go search engine, I forget the exact name of the Washington Post article, but, but it was about the financial reform bill uh, to pass Senate, I believe. But if you just Google financial reform bill, Washington Post, $600 trillion, because $600 trillion was in the article, it'll come up. So just Washington Post, financial reform bill, $600 trillion, because I want to have that and quote that to Ron Paul when he's on. Okay, let's hurry through your calls. Brian in North Carolina. Brian, you're on the air. Hey. I am. I was a victim of childhood vaccinations, so I woken up when I went to your website, and that's when I started my website, USWGO Alternative News. I think you've seen it before. Okay, what's on your mind today? Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit. I'm going to try to be quick anyways. I, I, I heard about how the FEC is going after Ron Paul, and I think it's awful. It's like Hitler style. Once they bring in all these snakes into the office and get rid of people like Ron Paul and Rand Paul, they'll have complete control of the Capitol. Exactly. And, and most of the snakes in government are CFR, Council on Foreign Relations, that openly writes they want a one-world government, openly wants a North American Union, openly wants secret arrest of citizens, uh, openly wants all this tyranny and all these new wars. Openly wants weather modification. The CFR calls for that. Openly wants cashless society, world government. And the government's just full of CFR, which is the corporate governance body. It's full of all these Harvard people. It's full of all these Goldman Sachs people. This is a private corporate takeover of our country, and it's happening now. I appreciate your call, Brian. Lauren in Minnesota, you're on the air. Alex? Yes, go ahead. Can you hear me? 
Prison Planet, uh, watching on Prison Planet here. I just wanted to give you an update from the Twin Cities. Um, I'm a health care worker as well, but I'm not striking. But we have uh, on Tuesday 12,000 RNs getting ready to strike on Tuesday. I've got several dozens of videos uh, getting ready to get out there on the strike lines and wake them up. I urge everyone else to do the same. <clears throat> um, divide and conquer by the Ob Obamacare. Obamacare. Um, also, <clears throat> Uh, Pioneer Press, June 28th, front, front page news. New documents reveal <clears throat> um, inspectors knew the bridge could collapse. And this is uh, one of the highly suspicious related to the NAFTA superhighway. Wanted to get your uh, comment on that, if any. And uh, I know a friend in uh, transportation, he just received, <laughs> he's awake too, he just received a first observer card from Homeland Security. I talk, re report suspicious activities, call Homeland Security. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I had, Alex. Uh, I could uh, get your comments, please. Well, that's part of InfraGuard, of course, them get all getting their little tattletale cards. And that would be fine if we didn't have a corrupt government that can't be trusted. And then, of course, they always start you out looking for Al-Qaeda, but the training then turns into look for gun owners, look for veterans, look for patriots. They're evil. Uh, but your other question uh, was dealing uh, with what? I forget now answering the bridge part. Uh, June 28th, Pioneer Press. New documents reveal inspectors knew the bridge had potential to collapse. Well, I haven't seen that article, but we all remember the famous Minnesota bridge collapse that became such a big diversion, and then they... Use that to push for a North American union, claiming that that would somehow fund new roads as if more taxes paid to offshore groups would help our country. But I seem to remember seeing articles about, and I'm going from memory here, but over 30% of bridges in U.S. may collapse any time. Uh, that came out that over 30, in fact, search engine that to make sure I'm accurate. This is about three years ago. 30% uh, of bridges in, uh, in danger of collapsing. And so for them to say that they had reports from the engineers that a bridge could collapse, there are engineers that are good men and women and who are part of highway departments nationwide who constantly, it turned out, I'm going from memory on this, but filed reports saying, yes, this bridge is in danger, that bridge is in danger, all these bridges are in danger of collapsing, and then they just don't get repaired. I mean, our railways, when, when my grandmother was going to college, uh, she would jump on the bullet train to get her PhD uh, three days a week and shoot, because this was after my dad was born, uh, and shoot down from, from Teague, Texas on the railhead there all the way to Houston for the day to go to college. And the train would get there in less than an hour and get back in less than an hour. And you're talking about 150 miles. The train went over 100 miles an hour. This was in the 50s. Those same rail beds now, you can't go on a train more than 50 miles an hour because they don't repair them. They don't fix the beds. They don't fix the rails. Uh, our roads are the same. Uh, you can drive 150 miles an hour on German roads, not here, uh, because the money doesn't go to build the roads. It goes to line the pockets of the bankers. So, yes, I have seen the reports uh, not just in Minnesota, I haven't seen that particular one, where they know bridges and trestles everywhere on the verge of collapsing, and they're collapsing all the time. So I appreciate your call. Really good points. Uh, up next here is Jim in Illinois. Jim, you're on the air. Hey, Alex. Hey, buddy. Uh, yeah, I just want to give you my uh, Jim from Illinois checking in for this week. Um, we have a problem here in Illinois about land acquisition. They're trying to take people's land um, by eminent domain for a new um, airport way before the FAA has even approved it. Okay? And they want to buy their land at 50% of what it was two years ago. I just wanted to check in with you with that and uh, let you know about that. Well, it just sounds like there's corruption everywhere. Exactly. You know, you know, this is crazy, man. Well, right in, okay, go ahead. I'm just saying, just checking in with you, Alex. You know, this it doesn't even make any sense anymore. I'm a 51-year-old male. 
I don't understand anything anymore. This isn't the country I grew up in. This isn't the country I uh, I saw. I, I don't understand anything anymore. I hear you, my friend, and I appreciate your call. Just getting worse and worse. Uh, we have people that don't care about the country and the future. They care about robbing and getting total power and control now. Uh, let's go ahead and take another call here. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Brian in Tennessee. Brian, you're on the air. Hey, Alex, how's it going? Good, sir. Uh, long time.